Hello, Familia. This is Acts chapter 27. When it was decided that we were to sail to Italy, they handed over Paul and some other prisoners prisoners to a centurion named Julius of the Imperial Regiment. So we, when we had boarded a ship of Adramitium, <laughs> we put to sea, intending to sail to ports along the coast of Asia. Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, was with us. The next day we put in at Sidon, and Julius treated Paul kindly and allowed him to go to his friends to receive their care. Glory be to God. When we had put out to sea from there, we sailed along the northern coast of Cyprus because the winds were against us. After sailing through the open sea of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we reached Myra and Lycia. Then the centurion found an Alexandrian ship sailing for Italy and put us on board. Sailing slowly for many days, we came with difficulty as far as Canidus, since the wind did not allow us to approach it, we sailed along the south side of Crete, of Salmon. With yet more difficulty, we sailed along the coast and came to a place called Fair Havens, near the city of Lycia. By now, much time had passed and the voyage was already dangerous. Since the fast was already over, or the Day of Atonement was already over, Paul gave his advice and told them, Men, I can see that this voyage is headed toward damage and heavy loss. Not only of the cargo in the ship, but also of our lives. Amelia felt that deep. <laughs> this voyage is heading towards damage and heavy loss. I don't know why. I just felt it in my spirit. Verse 11. But the centurion paid attention to the captain and the owner of the ship rather than to what Paul said. Since the harbor was unsuitable to winter in, the majority decided to set sail from there, hoping somehow to reach Phoenix, a harbor on Crete, open to the southwest and northwest, and to winter there. When a gentle south wind sprang up, they thought about, or they thought they had achieved their purpose. They weighed anchor and sailed along the shore of Crete. But not long afterward, a fierce wind called the Northeaster rushed down from the island. Or Eurokio, a violent northwest wind. Since the ship was caught and un was unable to head into the wind, we gave way to it and were driven along. After running under the shelter of a little island called Kata, we were barely able to get control of the skiff. After hoisting it up, they used ropes and tackle and girded the ship. Then fearing they would run aground in Sirtis, they lowered the drift anchor, and in this way they were driven along. Because we were being severely battered by the storm, they began to jettison the cargo the next day. On the third day, they threw the ship's gear overboard with their own hands. <clears throat> For many days, neither sun nor stars appeared, and the severe storm kept raging. Finally, all hope that we would be saved was disappearing. Since many were going without food, Paul stood up among them and said, You men should have followed my advice not to sail from Crete and sustain this damage and loss. Now I urge you to take courage, because there will be no loss of any of your lives, but only of the ship. Glory be to God, for this night an angel of God, of the God I belong to and serve stood by me and said, Don't be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar. And look, God has graciously given you all those who are sailing with you. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Therefore, take courage, men. Familia, take courage. Because I believe God that it will be just the way it was told to me. However, we must run aground on a certain island. I believe it too, Familia. When the 14th night came, we were drifting in the Adriatic Sea, and in the middle of the night, the sailors thought they were approaching land. They took a sounding and found it to be 120 feet deep. 
When they had sailed a little farther and sounded again, they found it to be 90 feet deep. Then fearing we might run aground in some rocky place, they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for daylight to come. Some sailors tried to escape from the ship. They had let down the skiff into the sea, pretending that they were going to put out anchors from below. Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, unless these men stay in the ship, you cannot be saved. And the shoulder soldiers cut the ropes holding the skiff and let it drop away. I love how they're listening to him now. Glory be to God. When it was about daylight, Paul urged them all to take food, saying, Today is the fourteenth day that you have been waiting and going without food, having eaten nothing. Therefore I urge you to take some food. For this has to do with your survival, since none of you will lose a hair from your head. After he said these things and had taken some bread, he gave thanks to God in the presence of all of them. And when he broke it, he began to eat. They, they all became encouraged and took food for themselves. In all, there were 276 of us on the ship. When they had eaten enough, they began to lighten the ship by throwing the grain overboard into the sea. When daylight came, they did not recognize the land, but sighted a bay with a beach. They planned to run the ship ashore if they could. After casting casting the anchors, or casting off the anchors, rather, they left them in the sea, <clears throat> at the same time loosening the ropes that held the rudders. Then they hoisted the foresail to the wind and headed for the beach. But they struck a sandbar and ran the ship aground. The bow jammed fast and remained unmove, immovable, while the stern began to break up by the pounding of the waves. The soldier's plan was to kill the prisoners so that no one could swim away and escape. But the centurion kept them from carrying out their plan because he wanted to save Paul. So he ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and get to land. The rest were to follow, some on planks and some on debris from the ship. In this way, everyone safely reached the shore. Glory be to God. You know... The spirit of this, this whole chapter is about following God and that when we do, everyone is safe. He promises that. He says it over and over again in the word of God that, you know, salvation has come to this household. <laughs> you know, this man believed and therefore his whole family was saved. I believe. That when he says that everyone will reach safety, I believe him. I believe that who we include in our household, God will also include. I don't know how. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, you know, how he's going to make that, that one person that we just think, no way. I don't know how, but I believe. I believe his arm is not too short to save. In the name of Jesus, I believe. And I also don't believe that it was by any coincidence that the sun is shining in right now. Let it be so, Father God. Let it be so in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you and keep you familiar. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. And may he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you and to grant you his most beautiful and precious salome that cannot be bought that cannot be earned, that cannot be worked hard enough. We could work for 10,000 years in perfection for God, and it cannot earn it. It's a gift. Glory be to God. Hallelujah and amen. Bye, Familia.